Hey there, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here, just taking my badge off from the convention. Uh, again, I'm coming into you live at 5 on uh, this Sunday, Sunday, November 26th, because I was at a convention all weekend. And uh, at 2.30, I tried to leave a message. I don't know if it went through. It might have come through without sound. Sometimes that happens, unfortunately. But I tried to leave a message to uh, let you know I'd be on later today because I was not able to... Uh, do my regular do my regular time at 2.30 because I, I was at a convention I'm waiting on Periscope to come up uh, on my phone uh, so hopefully that flips soon hello somebody joined and there we go hello to my Periscope audience so yes yeah, so I'm on today at 5 again much later than my regular time because I was at a convention at uh, two thirty, so I didn't have a chance to give the word today. So those of you that are here with me live, thank you so much for joining. God bless. Those of you that aren't able to watch it live, you can of course watch the replay when I'm done. So uh, as always, I ask the Lord, what do you want me to say to the body of Christ? Uh, and if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. But I asked the Lord what he wanted me to say, and he said the word for today is rest. Okay, rest. So we're going to have a couple of scriptures we're going to look at. Then I'm going to give a prophetic utterance about that. And I'm also going to do some teaching, some exegetical teaching and some prophetic teaching. So let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 29. Now, for those of you that are more advanced in the word of God, sometimes I'm going to say some things that are aimed more towards those that are just starting out. And for those of you that are just starting out, sometimes I use concepts that maybe, you know, they aren't where you are. Sometimes when we're dealing with Bible teaching, we're all at different levels when we hear it. So I just want to tell you, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Whatever level you are with Scripture, whatever level you are with God, praise God, you're growing. Okay? So don't feel bad. So if I say something that you don't get, then please just type me in a question so I can deal with it. And, uh, you know, we'll, but I, I don't, we'll move on. But I don't want anybody to feel bad about where they are in God. Okay? So we're reading out of the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book in what we call the New Testament. It is also known as, you're welcome, it is also known as a part of the Gospels. And that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the Gospels are the books that chronicled Jesus' life when he uh, walked the earth as a man. Okay? So Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 29 says, from the King James Version, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now, what does that mean? What is God talking up there? I'm just pulling up some scriptures while I'm talking to you. What does the Lord mean when he says that? Okay, well, on the surface... You don't have to necessarily go back to the Hebrew and the Greek to get the surface meaning because the surface meaning is very, very clear. He says, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Lord, have mercy. Now, let's look at that in the Greek. In the Greek, that phrase, I will give you rest, says, I make to rest, give rest to, rest, take my ease. Um, the Greek word there is anapuo. I believe I'm saying that right. Oh, excuse me. On a powwow. That's right. On a powwow. And it means to give you rest. It also means to complete a process. Properly to give rest after the needed task is completed. To rest or pause after precious toil and care. So what is the Lord saying to us? The Lord is saying to us is that if you are burdened, if you are heavy laden with the struggles of life, if you are heavy laden with worry, if you don't have a man, cast your cares on him. If you don't have a plan, if you need direction, whatever it is that is worrying you and whatever it is that is giving you anxiety, okay, then, hello, who was that? Uh, I'm sorry. And then God is saying that he wants you to rest. He wants you to come to him and turn all those burdens over to him. He wants you to come to him and turn all those things over to him. You don't have to carry them. Okay? That is one of the benefits of being a Christian. That's why I keep telling believers, you need to cash in on your full benefits. 
what is the point of Father sending Jesus to earth to become a human and to live among us and then to be arrested and to be beaten and to die on the cross for our sins and to be resurrected the third day, to go through all that, and we're not going to cash in on the full benefits. What's the, what's the point of that? Okay? So if you're a believer, you should cash in on your full benefits. And if you're a Christian, your Savior is telling you that whatever worries you, whatever takes away your sleep, whatever gives you anxiety, whatever is getting on your nerves, you can cast it on him. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The Lord says, I will exchange your stress for my rest. Now, why does God say we have to come to him? Here's why. Because God does not force his love or his grace on anyone. Because Jesus is a gentleman, he does not force. And God is a good shepherd. Okay, he's a good shepherd. Well, we're going to prosper in that. Okay, uh, I'll deal with that. I'll address that. Because God is a good shepherd. Okay, he does not force his love or his grace on anyone. You have to come to him. You have to seek him out. You have to press into Christ to let God know that you're serious and you mean business and you're serious about your relationship with him. Because the Lord's not going to force. God does not force. Okay? Love does not force. Okay? So you have to go to the Lord. You have to seek him out. And when you go to the Lord, here's what you do. You unburden. You literally crack your sternum open, your spiritual sternum, your rib cage. And open and pour out everything that's in your soul and your heart to Christ. There's nothing you can say that he can't handle. There's nothing you can say that would surprise him. And there's nothing you could ever say or do that would make him stop loving you. Can you see that? Can you see that as Christians we have an extreme benefit and we ought to cash in on it. You have someone that you can go to regardless of your stress, regardless of your mental state. Okay, I'm going to deal with that later while the wicked are prospering. I see you. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. Regardless of your mental state, regardless of all that, and receive rest. Receive peace of mind. Receive comfort. Receive a plan. Receive a direction. Receive a way out. Receive a way to overcome. Can't you see that? Can't you see the, the blessedness we have as Christians? So we ought to take full advantage of it. Okay? So, again, so that's the first scripture we're looking at. Now we're going to move to Hebrews chapter 4. Uh, this scripture is way more intense. Okay? Hebrews 4 is way more intense. So here we go. We're going to read Hebrews. Hebrews is in the New Testament towards the back. Hebrews is a book basically written to Jewish Christians. Jewish Christians but we Gentiles can learn from it as well. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Okay, now what does that mean in plain English? I'll tell you what that means. What that means is that God means for us to have rest in this life. One of the things that the Lord has called me to do as a prophet and prophetically is to bust up all of our old religious sayings, to tear up all of our old religious teachings because we have been saying things to people that are wrong. One of the things that we have been saying to Christians that are wrong is that everything about the Christian life is for when you go to heaven. That is incorrect. Okay, you are supposed to have rest in this life. You are supposed to have victory in this life. You are supposed to have triumph in this life. Okay, yes, riches, finances to finance your dreams in this life. If it was about going to heaven, then we would get saved and die. We would just get saved and drop dead. But for years, I've been in church since I was a little boy. For years, people talk about Canaan is the promised land and when we get to glory and when I get to heaven. No, 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 no. You're supposed to have rest and realize the promises of God now in this life. That's what it means to have rest. So let me go practical. Let me tell you what that means practically. It means you're supposed to have enough money to build your dreams. Okay? It means you're supposed to be married to the right person. You're not supposed to spend your life married to the wrong person. 
That is not a restful situation. That ain't going to be nothing but stress and aggravation because you're going to be trying to, in your flesh, make something work that God never ordained to work. That's not rest. Okay? If you're not living your dream, if you're not doing what you were created to do, that is not rest. Okay? That just means you have a job. Okay? If, okay, if uh, you uh, are going to have rest, you have to follow your purpose. Your purpose is where everything lies, not just having a job, not just having a career. And rest is when you find out why God created you. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Do you see what I mean? So there's a practical element to this thing. We're talking about health. Uh, there's rest in your body when you eat well and exercise. You sleep better when you eat well and you exercise. You sleep better when you don't have a lot of stress on your mind when you go to bed. You can rest when you sleep. Sometimes we just sleep when we don't rest. Have you ever awakened and you're just as tired as you were when you went to sleep? That's because your mind didn't rest. You're so full of stress and worry, you didn't, you didn't bring the mind down. You see what I mean? So that's another reason it's a good idea sometimes to pray before you go to sleep. Unburden yourself. Unburden yourself before you try to sleep and tell Jesus about everything that you feel, everything that happened during the day, everything, okay, up for several, wow, getting no sleep at all, everything that you're struggling with, Okay, let me deal with that. Uh, carry the fire of God. Uh, the things you've been sharing with me. What the Spirit of God just told me is you need to bring your life under the Lordship of Christ. Hey there. Uh, hey, you need to bring your life under the Lordship of Christ. Many times what has happened is our life has gone off the track because we have disobeyed God at some point and we have created situations for ourselves that are not things that God uh, has meant for us to deal with. Also, be specific in your prayer. Tell God, I need a financial plan to get me out of debt. God, how do you want to get me out of debt? Sometimes, now, now be, uh, be uh, careful about what I'm about to say now and listen to me carefully and understand what I'm about to say to you. Sometimes we think we can force God's hand. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we think if we praise God enough, sometimes we think if we give enough money, enough, tithe, enough tithes and offerings, that we can change God's will for our lives. God is not a genie. You should give sacrificially. Obviously, we always pay tithes. You should give sacrificially because the Holy Spirit leads you to. Okay? Uh, we should praise God, thank God regardless. We can always thank God for what he's already done. If the Lord never does anything else for us, we can thank him for what he's already done. But you don't just start giving us excessively because you're trying to manipulate God into doing what you want him to do. That is genie concept. That is another concept that we have messed up in our religious teaching to make you think, I need a financial miracle, so I'm just going to give all this money. You should give that money if the Holy Spirit told you to give you that money. Told you to give that money, number one. And number two, you have to ask God for what is his plan. Let me give you a practical example. Some people have been giving, and they haven't been listening to what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying the way you're going to get your financial harvest is by becoming all that I want you to be. In other words, you're going to have to build a business. You're going to have to go back to school. You're going to have to increase your ability to make money by becoming better at what you do. What you're looking for is manna. You think that God is just going to make it fall out the sky like a lottery ticket. It's whatever the Lord says. That's why you hear me say it all the time. That's why you need the three levels of word. You need the written word. You need a relationship with the living word, Jesus Christ, and you need the prophetic rhema word because the God is a person. The Lord is a person, not a set of rules. You can't force his hand. Why do you think so many people end up married to the wrong person? It's because they run into the presence of God and they've already had sex with this person. They've already fallen in love with this person. They've already decided, I'm going to marry him. And then you run to Jesus and you ask the Lord, just put his stamp on it. You never ask the Lord, is this the right one for me? Because you can't change God's will. But the good news is, is that God's will is the highest and the best for you. 
Remember I told you part of my job as a prophet is to bust up that old bad religious teaching that has got these Christians not having rest. You're supposed to be married to the right person. And until the Lord confirms to you that that's the right person for you, stay single. I know that's hard. I know that's not what we want. I know we desire companionship. I know we desire sex. I know we desire children. I know we desire to be married. But until the Lord says, this is the one I have for you, don't just go pick you somebody. If you just going to pick you somebody, it's going to be a mess. Because you can't make a marriage work if it's not ordained by God. That's going to be you struggling in your own strength, and that's not going to be rest. The same is true with your finances. If whatever the Lord's plan is, see, God uh, has a plan that's individual. It's just like this. Let me give you another practical example. It's just like when the Lord healed people in Scripture. The Lord didn't heal people the same way. When he healed that one dude that was blind, he actually uh, spat on the ground, made some spit, made some mud, and rubbed it on his eye. Some people he healed by grabbing their hand, like when he raised the dead girl, he grabbed her hand and he said, uh, uh, a damsel I say to thee, arise. Sometimes he just spoke the word, like the man that was sick for 38 years, he said, then take up your bed and walk. Uh, when he called Lazarus back from the grave, he said, Lazarus come forth. He didn't touch him at all, he just said it. You see what I mean? Uh, when he healed the lepers, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. You see that? So what I'm saying is when Jesus healed, he didn't heal the same way every time. So it's the same way in every area of your life. So sometimes when people give their financial testimony, they say, God did this for me. And then Christians get it in their head that God's going to do it the same way for them. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, that's wrong. You have to ask God, what is your plan for me to get out of debt? God might tell you, give more offerings. God might not say anything about your offerings. God might say, I want you to praise me more. Or God might say, you need to work harder. God might say, you ain't got no money because you need to change your work ethic. Or God might say, the reason you have not overcome financially is because I want you to start a business. And as long as you keep working for somebody else, you're never going to have the breakthrough that you want. Do you see what I mean? God is a person, my dear brothers and sisters. God is a person, not a set of rules. God is a person, not your personal genie. Okay? You have to go to him. Remember I told you, Matthew 11. Jesus said, come unto me. You have to go to the Lord for yourself and ask him, what is your will for my life in every single area? What is your will for my finances? Then after you show me what kind of financial level you want me to live on, God, show me how to get there. How do you want me to get there, Lord? What is your will for my life, Lord? Am I supposed to be married? Because everybody's not supposed to be married. Some people are supposed to be single. And that's why some people, they keep getting married over and over and over again and it ain't working because you ain't supposed to be married. What's your will for my life, God? Am I supposed to be married? If the Lord says yes, then Lord, when do you want me to get married? At what stage of life? Who do you want me to marry? Ask him for specifics. And that's one of the things that uh, I always want to do in my prophetic ministry is give you specifics. Because so many Christians have gotten the wrong idea and ended up in the wrong places. Can you see it? And the Lord told us in the scripture, the word again today is rest. God wants you to rest. <coughs> Excuse me. God wants you to have more than enough money to build your dreams, to live in your dream house. God wants, if, if a house is your dream, a house might not be your dream. You might be an evangelist or a missionary. Your dream might be to move to another country and... Uh, minister to people that haven't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. You might, you know, live out of a hotel. You might live in huts. You might live on whatever level because your dream is not a home. Your dream is not a house. Your dream is to go, you know, to another country, whatever. See, you have to have enough money to do whatever your dream is, whatever God's will is for you. And that's not the same. You see what I mean? That's why so many of us as Christians do not have rest. Because you haven't been asking God, 
what his will is for you. Some of y'all are authors. Some of y'all are writers and you still haven't written that book. Okay, well, baby, if you're bouncing checks, then you don't have enough money to cover those checks. You're not supposed to bounce checks to try to help the kingdom. So, so you need to pull that back. Don't give money that you don't have. Pull that back. Don't write bad checks because that doesn't help the church if you're writing bad checks. Pull that back. Stop that. And then go to the Lord and ask the Lord, what do you want me to do with my finances to get your finances on track? Because some of y'all, like I was saying, some of y'all are, uh, are authors. Some of y'all are supposed to be writing books. Some of y'all are supposed to be going into ministry. Some of y'all are living in the wrong city. Some of y'all, you're not doing what the Lord told you to do. That's why the finances haven't been coming. Okay? So you've got to ask the Lord, what is your will for my life? Then once he tells you, you have to ask him, then what is your plan to get me into that? And the Lord will lead you step by step. He may not give you all the details, but you obey what he does tell you to do. That's the way you get blessed. Not trying to force God's hand saying, Lord, I've been praising you every week. We're supposed to praise him. He deserves the praise. He's worthy of the praise. But praise is not a manipulation tool to make God do what you want him to do. We're supposed to give tithes. We're supposed to give offerings. We're supposed to give uh, money to the house where we get ministered to. Tithes and offerings. That's right. But you can't get over into excessive giving because you think you're going to use that to make God make you be a millionaire. You can't force God's hand. You have to ask him, okay? So again, it's my job to bust up some of that old religious... Hey there. Bust up some of that old religious bad teaching we've been suffering with for a long time. Because Jesus says in the scripture, and the Holy Ghost said prophetically, that we're supposed to be entering into rest. You see what I mean? First time, oh hey, welcome, well God bless you. Thanks for joining us for the first time. Okay, so I was reading Matthew 4, one. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us, left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. That's the verse that tells us there is rest in this life. Um... Let's skip down uh, to verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must, enter the, some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Okay, that's a lot of scripture, and I could preach for hours about that. But, let me give you some summation points. What the Bible is saying there is that God promised the children of Israel that he brought out of Egypt. He brought them out of slavery and abject poverty. He brought them out of Egypt through the wilderness, and God's plan was to bring them into Canaan or the promised land where they could be land owners, where they could own their own property, build their own houses, build their own business, sow their own seed, and reap a harvest, be slaves no more. Be living in the wilderness no more. That's what God wanted for them in this life. They did not enter into that, the first generation that came out of Egypt, because they did not believe God. They got to the edge of the promised land. They sent some spies out to spy the land. Only two spies came back with a faith-filled positive report, Joshua and Caleb. They came back and said, we can take it, we can do it, we can overcome the mother ten said, oh, there's giants and oh, we're grasshoppers and oh, we can't do it. And God got so mad, he cursed them to stay in the wilderness. And they wandered in the wilderness until they died. That's what that scripture is talking about in Hebrews chapter 4. It means that God meant for them to own land, to own property, to sow and reap a harvest and not be slaves anymore. That's in this life. And he means the same thing for us as Gentile Christians under the new covenant. He means in this life, you don't have to be a financial slave your whole life. He means you're not supposed to be burdened down your whole life with bad relationships, bad health, bad money, bad thoughts. Okay? He means that in this life, 
you are supposed to have peace of mind through him. In this life, you're supposed to have emotional health through him. In this life, you're supposed to have financial health through him. In this life, you're supposed to have physical health through him. That's what it means to enter into God's rest. You're supposed to be married to the right person. You're supposed to be living in the right place. You're supposed to be living in the right city. You're supposed to be going to the right church. You're supposed to be building the right business. That is rest. That is what you're supposed to have. And so many of us believers don't have it. We just don't have it because we don't believe. We don't believe. You don't believe that God loves you and you don't believe that his plan is personal. You believe that old crazy religious stuff where, where God just, you know, is some kind of genie that you can just order up a miracle. Or you believe that old crazy religious stuff that everything's for going by and by to some pie in the sky when we die. All that is wrong. Okay? So you're supposed to have rest right now. I want to look again at verse 7, and then I'm going to give a prophetic utterance, and then I'm going to pray, and we're going to close. It says, again, he limits a certain day, saying in David, that means he said it in the Psalms, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, let me explain to you what that means in a practical sense. A lot of Christians have missed their blessing because when the Lord first talked to you, you ignored it. You hard your heart. You said, I'm not going to obey. A whole lot of people uh, have been living in the wrong city for two, five, seven, going on 10 years, maybe some even 20 years, because the Lord told you to move and you wouldn't move. The Lord told you not to marry that person and you married them anyway. The Lord told you to get involved with your children's lives when they were young, while they were still tender, and you were so busy doing other things, you let your children grow up, now they're mad at you, now they don't want fellowship with you, now you got no relationship with them, because when the Lord told you you need to be a better parent. You harden your heart. You didn't listen. And that's why you're reaping the consequences that you are right now. We're all dealing with that on some level. Because nobody obeys perfectly except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only sinless one. Jesus Christ is the only one that heard the voice of the Father and did what the Father said 100% every time. Even when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he was struggling with the Father's will, he got up saying, not my will, but thine be done. Okay? So, so I don't want you to go on a guilt trip because you missed it. Because we've all missed it. <laughs> don't you know that many people that are praying about money, don't you know that God has given you millions of dollars worth of ideas years ago? You never capitalized on your ideas. You never formed a business. You never filed a patent. You never registered a trademark. You never wrote that book. You never acted on what God gave you millions of, millions of dollars worth of ideas years ago. And you never acted on it. Can you see that? We heard his voice, but we hardened our hearts. We didn't do what the Lord said do. You go into a church, and that's not the church you want uh, that God wants you in. So every day you said, praise God, I'm a good Christian. I go to church. But if you go into the wrong church, you're not going to be blessed in that church. You're not going to be blessed in that church. I remember when I came to Crusaders, I go to Crusaders Ministries on the south side of Chicago. I remember when I came to Crusaders, the Lord told me specifically to join Crusaders. He said, this is the church I want you in. He spoke to me very, very clearly. He said, join this church. And I joined like, I think maybe the first or second time I went. Because I heard the Holy Ghost saying in no uncertain terms, this is where you're supposed to be. So I joined. I obeyed. I did not harden my heart and tell the Lord, I don't want to go to this church. If that's where you want me to go, that's where I'm going. Okay? But I didn't always say that. I wasn't always obedient. Okay? Been plenty of times in life where I hardened my heart and reaped some negative consequences because I didn't do what the Lord said do. Okay? And when you don't do what the Lord says do, you don't get the rest. You get the curse. That's the setup. And so we got to learn to obey. You got to do what the Lord says, when the Lord says, the way he says to get his full blessing. Let me repeat that. You got to do what the Lord says do. You got to do it when he says do it. And you got to do it the way he says do it to get the full blessing. If you don't do it that way, you're not going to get the fullness. Just understand that. If you hear God tell you something and you give God the hand, you're not going to get that blessing. That blessing is going to pass you by. 
So it's not that God won't give you other opportunities and chances, but you missed out on that. That's why a whole lot of people uh, missed out on their spouse. I know this one person that told me many, many years ago, God was telling them to move out of state. And I said, are you sure? Because I was very close to this person. Uh, and they said, yeah, David, I think the Lord's telling me to move. I was like, are you sure? And they said, yeah. They moved and met their spouse in that new state, in that new city. They're still married now, not, still married now, still together. Got three beautiful children. Do you know why? Because she obeyed. She said, the Lord told me, move here, so I'm going. And she found her rest. Her husband was not here where she was living. Her husband is where she moved to. Look at that. See that? You got to do what the Lord says, when the Lord says, the way he says do it. That is how you get into the rest of Christ. If you don't want to do it that way, you're not going to get the fullness of blessing. You're going to end up like Moses. You're going to know that you're the deliverer. You're going to know that God called you, but you tried to do it your way. His sheep know his voice. Amen. You tried to do it your way. After Moses rose up and killed the Egyptian, he ran because he said, surely this thing is known. Everybody knows I'm a murderer now. And so uh, it's not going to go well for me now. So Moses left. Then he spent 40 years in the wilderness and God addressed him again at 80 years old. And at the age of 80, Moses had to go head on and do what he was always supposed to do. Part of that included climbing the mountain to spend time with God so he could write the first five books of the Bible. Can you imagine climbing mountains at 80 when you could have been climbing them at 40? He could have been doing all that work at 40 if he had just listened to what God said do. But Moses tried to do it in his own strength. Moses tried to do it his own way, and then he tried to run from his destiny. And God stopped him 40 years later and said, no, you're the deliverer. You are the deliverer, but you tried to do it in your strength. Now you're going to do it in my strength. Go down there and tell Pharaoh that I am that I am said, let my people go. That's different than the first time. The first time Moses rose up with his own hand and slew the Egyptian. When he went back the next time, he went in the name of I am that I am and brought the 10 plagues on Egypt on Egypt. See, that was the hand of God because Moses was in obedience. <laughs> he was doing what the Lord said do when the Lord said do it the way he said do it. So I want to encourage you not to wait till you're 80 years old to get into obedience. Let me say that one more time. I want to encourage you not to wait until you're 80 years old to get into obedience. You don't have to wait until the later years of your life. You can get into obedience right now today as you're listening to me right now. The next time the Lord speaks to you, make up your mind to do what he's telling you to do the way he's telling you to do it, when he's telling you to do it. I, I know it's not going to make sense to your eyes. It's not going to make sense because it's not a sight walk. I know it's not going to make sense to your natural mind because it's by faith. It's not by intellect. And I know it's not going to make sense to the people around you because the ways of God are not the ways of man. God called, if you didn't know it, Jesus's mama, Mary, was around 12 or 13 or 14 years old. She's a Middle Eastern girl getting pregnant out of wedlock. And remember, Joseph didn't believe her. If Joseph had been a different kind of man, he could have literally grabbed Mary by her hair, drug her to the middle of town, put a bag over her head, stuffed her in the ground, and stoned her until she died for being pregnant out of wedlock. So that means when Mary accepted the Simon to be Jesus' mama, she was literally putting her life on the line. You understand? Because it didn't look like what people thought it would look like. If Messiah was going to be born on earth, you would never pick an out of wedlock pregnant teenager to birth the savior of the world because God don't think like we do. That's why <laughs> that's why you have to obey God because it's not going to make sense to you. It's not going to look like what people think it should look like. OK, so whatever the Lord is telling you to do, if you are struggling to try to get out of a situation, God might go against what you thought altogether. God might tell you what you need to do is forgive. And you going on and on and on about 
they did me wrong and they should feel this way and that ain't right and how come they prospering and blah, 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 blah. And you going on and on and on and on about all the things that you think are supposed to happen and the Lord might cut through all that and say, what you need to do is forgive. You're not going to want to do it. Your flesh isn't going to want to do it. But if that's what the Lord tells you to do, that's what you need to do. You understand? You don't have to wait until you're 80 to obey God. You can obey right now. And as you, amen, no more pity parties, amen. And as you learn how to do, because it's something you got to learn. As you learn how to do, I mean, I've had to do it once a minute. I always tell you, I always practice what I preach. I'm never telling you to do something that I am not doing or haven't had to do. I'm never telling you to do something that I myself have not had to learn. I had to learn, uh, for example, in my prophetic ministry. Sometimes the Lord gives you stuff that you can't release right away. The Lord gave me some stuff in 2015 that I'm just now releasing. 2015, he told me two years ago, but I couldn't say it back then. And now the Holy Ghost is giving me leave to say it now. And I had to learn as a prophet that when God shows me stuff and God tells me stuff, it's not for me to run my mouth until the Lord say, open your mouth. It's not for me to tell everything I see in the spirit until the Lord say, now tell it. And it's up for uh, it's up to him to tell me how much he wants me to say. He might show me something and then he say, say half of that. Now, leave the rest for later. If that's what the Lord says do, then I've learned as a prophet that's what I got to do. And I don't care how that looks to people. I care about being obedient to God. You understand? So that's what I mean when I say I'm living what I'm teaching. I always want to assure you of that because, you know, that sometimes people wonder about that. I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. OK, I had to learn and I'm not perfect. I have to learn and I'm practicing every day. I'm practicing every day. When I hear the Holy Spirit leading, when I hear him telling me to do something, I was in a situation. I'll say this and then I'll close. I was in a situation the other night. I was really, really, really really tired i mean really tired like almost out on my feet and i walked past this person and i felt the holy spirit hit my heart and i was like oh man i was so tired i was like you want me to minister now and the holy ghost hit my heart again he's like yeah i want you to minister now so i went to the grocery store and i came back out because i was like the holy spirit is leading me to talk to this person and as tired as i am i'm dog tired you know how when you get dog tired, when a dog gets tired, his tongue hanging out of his mouth. You just breathing heavy. You so tired. And I was dog tired. And the Holy Ghost said, go minister to them. I had to turn myself around and go back and speak the prophetic word to this person because that's what the Lord said do. That just happened to me last week. But I learned if the Lord tells me to do it, I got to do it. It's not about how I feel. Even if I don't feel like doing it, I got to do it. And I believe that person was blessed by what I released and what I had to say. And if I had been disobedient, I would, have, I would have not been blessed. And that person would have not been blessed. So that's what I mean when I tell you I'm living what I'm teaching. I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I'm doing what I'm sharing with you to do. Okay? So that's why I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters. Don't feel bad. Just learn how to get into obedience. And getting into obedience, doing what the Lord says... When the Lord says it, the way he says do it is what will lead you into the rest of Christ in finances, in relationships, in health, in ministry, in good thoughts, in healing for your soul. Do what the Lord says do. Do it the way he says do it. Do it when he says do it. And that's how you get into rest. All right. All right. Amen. Let me release this prophetic utterance to you. For behold, my people, the days have come where there will be a dividing line between the wheat and the tare. There will be a dividing line between the wheat and the chaff. I'm looking for wheat. I'm looking for my children that have their ears attuned to my voice that will obey. For I'm doing great and mighty things upon the earth which you know not. And I'm looking for obedience. I'm looking for obedience to my word, my will, and my way. So I can move the church forward in the way I want it moved. For I am the head of the church. I am Christ. I shed my blood. I died. I bought your redemption with my blood. Therefore, 
Harden not your heart, but rather tune your ears to me. And as you tune your ears to me in faith and love and obedience, I will give you rest. I will lead you to the green pastures and the still waters that I promised to bring rest to your life and rest to your soul, you and your family, you and your seed, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. God bless uh, for his word. Um, God bless for the Holy Ghost because prophets can only speak by the Holy Ghost. And that's why I'm always telling you, I'm always giving him the glory. That's him. That's not me. I just feel honored to be used uh, by God, to have a chance to be a part of his kingdom and his family. Because God don't need me. God don't need me for nothing. He's given me a chance to serve him. And he's given you a chance to serve him because he don't need us. Okay? So humble yourself and realize that you have an opportunity. Thank you. God bless you too. Realize you have an opportunity to be a part of God's kingdom. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to play a, a closing prayer. And then I'm going to remind you what's happening next week. And then we'll be out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for your prolific word. Thank you for your mighty word of rest. Thank you for your mighty prophetic utterance. Thank you for your mighty written word, the Bible. Thank you for all that you've given us for instruction in this life. And yes, Lord, we want to be obedient. We want to listen to what you're saying, oh God, so we can do what you say do, when you say do it, the way you say do it. We know that cuts against our flesh, oh God. So please give us grace to overcome. Please give us the power to obey the way you want us to obey because we don't want to be chaff. We don't want to be tares. We don't want to be the kinds of Christians that die in the wilderness because we never made it to your promises in this life. We want to be Christians that have entered into rest that we might show forth your glory by the abundance of peace that is in our lives. So we thank you for it and we give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you so much for tuning in. Again, I know I was late today, but I was at a convention at 2.30. So thank you to all of you that have been watching me live on Facebook and uh, Periscope and on Twitter. And again, my announcement is next week, December 3rd, I'm going to uh, relaunch my music ministry. I have been doing music since I was a child. I've been in choir since I was 13 and 14 years old. I had my own group for a while. I'll tell you about it next week. But I'm relaunching my music ministry, and I'm going to be able to drop some music, and I'm going to explain to you what my music ministry is about and all that. So that's going to be next week on December 3rd. I have a Facebook page that's called Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. So I'm going to be on that page when I do the music thing, but the Periscope and Twitter will still be, on the, same, still be the same. Okay? So we'll deal with all that next week. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I hope you were blessed by today's prophetic word. And I'll see you next time. And so next time we'll be on time. I'll be at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday, December 3rd. Okay? God bless. I'll see you then. Oh, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you had a good holiday.